Hello, precious ones. Welcome to Case Time with Jesus, brought to you by COP USA. I am your host, Nina Eche. Hi, hi, children. Hi, hi, children of the Lord. Amen. Jesus, friend of little children. You are all welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus. Today is the day that the Lord has made that you and I need to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for all of us, our lives, precious ones at home. You are also welcome to today's program. Oh, it looks like if you look outside, it looks like we're about to enter into spring. Easter will be here soon and we'll be celebrating the death of Christ. But as you all know, we are continuing with our series, our series. But before we go ahead, um, I will let the precious ones that I have zoomed in to introduce themselves. You at home too, you can tell us your name as well. So we'll let the first person introduce their name. Hi, my name is Declan Ofer from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Darren Ofer from Cleveland District. My name is Shane from Cleveland District. My name is Janelle Piamenka, and I'm from Greater Grace Dallas District. Hello, my name is Jamie Bowl from the Cincinnati District. Fantastic. Precious ones, you are all welcome to Case Time with Jesus. You are welcome. And precious ones at home, too, you are welcome. We love all of you. We love you in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. We love all of you and God bless you for your time. God bless you. God richly bless you. So as you all know, my PowerPoint kind of tells it all, right? We are heading towards spring. Oh, we can't wait. Spring, 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 right? So precious ones, as you all know, this week, we have been uh, pretty much for the past few months now, we've been talking about, we have been having series about walk, 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 walk. And we did, uh, who can share with us the walk? Share with us the three walks that we have done. Who can tell us one? Yes, Darren. We learned how to walk in wisdom. We learn about how to walk in wisdom. God richly bless you. We learn about how to walk in wisdom. And then what was the next um, one we talked about? Yes, Jaden. We're learning walking in faith now. We are talking about walking in faith now. But before that, we talked about walk in wisdom. There was another one we talked about. Yes, Declan. Uh, we uh, we are learning about walking in truth. Walking in truth. We talked about walking in truth. And then there was the last one we talked about, which we just did last week. Yes, Jaden. I think it's walking in love. Walking in love. Fantastic. We, we talked about walking in love, walking in love. And today we are here to talk about the last series, which is walk in faith. The walk, walking in faith. That is the fourth one um, out of the four that we'll be talking about today. Walking in faith. God richly bless you. And as you all know, precious was our memory verse for today is James chapter one, verse five. James chapter one, verse five. And I read from the NLT version. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you from accent. Amen. Precious one, by now, everybody should be able to um, tell us this memory verse, right? We've been talking about this memory verse for more than a month. Um, James chapter one, verse five. If you need wisdom, ask for wisdom. Um, ask our generous God for wisdom and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking it. Wow. So all we have to do is to just ask, right? That's all we have to do. Ask. And he, the Lord, will give it to you without even rebuking you. Oh, the last time you were mean to this person. Oh, the last time you were not obedient to me. No. God, because Jesus loved little children, he will give it freely unto us. Don't you think we need to ask for wisdom all the time, precious ones? I think so. Yeah, we need to ask for wisdom all the time. 
Well, precious ones, as you all know, today we are talking about the walk, walking in faith. And the objective of our learning today is to learn how evidence of faith should be present in believers' life. Till we are here to learn how evidence of faith should present in a believer's life. Do you agree? Yeah. And the main idea is that we are um, pretty much walking in faith means relying and trusting in God, relying and trusting in God when we don't understand our circumstances. Walking in faith means that we're relying and trusting in God when we don't understand our circumstances. Others should be what? Well, be able to tell we are believers because of our faith, well, our faithful actions. I think I believe that too. And I love the definition of relying and trusting in God. When we don't even what? Understand our circumstances. That is faith, right? That is a fantastic definition. So precious ones, there's a lot of scriptures that we'll be reading. Um, we'll be reading Hebrews chapter 1, uh, 11, verse 1. We will read Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. We will read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. We will read Genesis chapter 9, 9 to 11. And then lastly, we will read um, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. So we'll allow the first person to read Hebrews chapter 1, 11, verse 1 for us. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you, Jaden. God bless you. God bless you, Jaden. He is the youngest among all our precious ones here. God bless you, Jaden. Um, who will read for us Matthew 17, 20? Who is going for Matthew 17, 20? Okay, before we come to Matthew 17, um, 17 20, um, Darren, can you read Genesis 9, verse 9 to 11 for us? Genesis 9, verse 9 to 11, from the end, from the New Living Translation. And I read verse 9. It says, I hereby confirm my covenant with you and your descendants, and with all the animals that were on the boat with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, every living creature on earth. Yes, I am confirming my covenant with you. Never again will floodwaters kill all living creatures. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. Genesis 9, the verse 9 to 11. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you. God richly bless you, um, Darren. Um, Declan, can you read the next scripture for us? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 5, verse 7, from yeah. the NIRV Bible. For we live by believing, not by seeing. Amen. Amen. We live by believing and not by what? By seeing. God richly bless you. And then, um, um, can, Darren, can you read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7? Whilst, um, James, can you uh, open your Bible to Matthew 17, 20 and get ready to read for us, please? Thank you. So, Darren, okay. you can go ahead with, and you are welcome, James. Um, um, can you open your Bible to Hebrews 7, 11, 7, please? Hebrews chapter 11, the verse 7 from the NLT. And I read, it was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family, his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about, that, about things that had never happened before. By faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world. And he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, the verse 7. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you. Amen. And um, Mr. Prophet, are you ready for us? Yes, auntie. Okay. Um, Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, for, for, from the New King James Version. And I'm reading, 
So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen. God richly bless all of you for your fantastic reading. God bless all of you. So precious ones, we have read a lot this afternoon and we'll go ahead with our lesson for this afternoon. We're going to go ahead with our lesson. So um, our discussion pretty much boils down to now, before we even hit the main um, topic, I just, you know what? Can somebody, let me ask a question. What is something that we know exists, but we cannot see? What are some of the things that you know exist, but we cannot see with our eyes? Yes, James. Uh, say one thing that we know exists, but we can't see with our eyes is um, like air that we breathe. Cause like we see it moving, we hear it moving, but we can't like physically see it with our eyes. Fantastic. God bless you. Yes, uh, Jaden. We believe in God, but we can't see him. We believe in God, but you but you remember we said God uh, created us in his own image. So when I see you, I see God, right? That's That was a nice try. But what else that we cannot see, right? But we do what? Be, we believe it exists. Yes, Darren. I believe um, wind because wind. Wind, we, yeah. We we can't mm -hmm. see it, but whenever you see the leaves blowing, you say it's very windy. And whenever you're in the cold, sometimes it's windy along with the cold, which is a very devastating combination. Fantastic. Who else? Yes, uh, Declan. Uh, gravity. Gravity, yes. When you jump, you expect to land on the floor, right? When you jump, you want to come back down and land on your feet. But do you know that gravity even exists? We don't even think about that. All we know is that it, we, when we jump, we have to land. We don't see it, but it happens, right? God richly bless you. Fantastic. Uh, who else? Okay, I have another question for you guys, okay? Now, how do we know it exists? How do we know the wind, the, the air, the gravity, how do we know they exist? Yes. Yes, um, Janelle. Um, the way we know that gravity exists is that when we jump up off the ground, we land back on the ground, and that's gravity pulling us down to the earth. So your experience of it, right? Yes. Okay, God bless you. Who else want to try? Yes, Darren. We know it exists because there is enough evidence. When, when like, um, like Janelle said, when gravity pushes you down, you can tell it's gravity. It's, gravity is just a name, but that is what it does. And when, when, the, when we breathe, uh, we can tell it is the air that we are breathing and not some leaf that we are breathing because we can just feel its presence there. Fantastic, great contribution. God bless you. Now, last question before we hit our lesson. What evidence of faith is in our lives? What evidence of faith is in our lives? Or can others even tell we are believers? Is the question clear? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you may not know about yourself, but you working, can people actually tell that you are a believer? What are some of the things that maybe you will do, right? that as we as we hear discussing the word of God, um, let's say a child just walks in and see the screen. What are some of the things that the child will hear that automatically the person will say that, oh, this is kind of some Christian stuff going on, right? What are some of the things that when, when people see you, can they tell you a believer? Yes, Declan. Yeah, uh, yes, because of our faithful actions, your, what are some of your faithful actions? Well, let's say that you are sick and you have, and then you have faith that you that you'll be healed. That's a faithful action. 
faithful action. God richly bless you. Yes, James, then they're on. Um, I was going to say that at school, like when they give food, what will set me apart is that I would always pray over my food. And every, all my friends know that about me, that before I eat my food, I, I'd have to pray for it. So I think that's something that would set me apart as a Christian. God bless you. God bless you for sharing. Yes, Darren. James just said what I was about to say, but I have another like another okay, thing. Share with us. And that, what that one is that when whenever you see you, every time people can tell, oh no no no, he just missed this test or something, or some he got blamed for something he didn't do, and everyone knows it. But the authority figures, people can tell even if even if you are in trouble and you know you weren't the one who did it, and you have a positive outlook, like it to be okay, to be okay. People be like, this guy is different because if this was another person, he'd be screaming, he'd be shouting, and the things he'd be saying, they won't be too friendly. God bless you for sharing it with us. You see, when you read Matthew 17, 20, Jesus said that just said uh, nothing would be impossible if we have faith, even as small as a master seed, right? Jesus said nothing will be impossible if we have faith, even as small as a master seed. If we want to grow in faith, we must keep moving forward in our relationship with God. So meaning that if we want to, or if we want to even exercise our, if you, if you have a, a, a faith that is as small as a master seed, you really have to have a good relationship with Christ, right? So that your faith can also what? Grow. Do you agree? Because if you, if you want your faith to grow, and you don't have any relationship with, with Christ, can your faith grow? Or will you be able to kind of try and exhibit that faith? Because as we sit here, when we get sick, as um, Declan cited earlier on, I'm hoping as a Christian that when I pray to God, God should heal me. Because the Bible says that by his stripes, all sicknesses were healed. The Bible didn't say some sicknesses were healed, right? So when the Bible, I will base, remember we learned about what? The truth, right? The walk with the truth. And the truth, we said that the truth was the word of God, right? So if the Bible tells me that by his stripes, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, he was, well, before he was crucified, he was whooped, right? He was whipped and he got stripes at his back. And the Bible says that through that wound that that blood was oozing from, all sicknesses were healed. So now I am quoting my words from the truth, the, the, the source of that truth, right? It which is the Bible. And I'm saying that word, by his stripes, all sicknesses were healed. So God, I'm believing on your word and I'm, I'm praying that, that I am healed. I'm exercising faith, right? So it is true now, we could, you know, you see how we can, we can link faith and truth here too, right? You need to know the word. You need to know what does the truth says about my life. And then when you are praying and you are exercising your faith, you'll be able to quote the truth, say, God, this is your word. And based on your word, this is what, and then you put it into practice. Precious ones. Any contributions? No. Okay. So that is how I understand. We need to know our word and then use God's word, stand on God's word and exercise our faith on that, right? The Bible says that ask for wisdom and I, the Lord, will give it to you without what? Rebuking you. So precious ones, why will we not ask for wisdom? Yes, Darren. I think we do ask for wisdom, but the problem is that when we ask for the wisdom, we don't have a good relationship with God. So then God will be like, what do you need it for? It's not like you're, you believe in me or anything because you're asking, but you, are, you, are, you already, you are at the back of your mind, you are thinking, well, I won't even have an, as much wisdom as Solomon in me, so why even bother? So sometimes we do ask for wisdom, but we don't really believe it. That will get like it. We doubt it. Like yeah, we, we doubt, doubt it. it. 
Yeah. And because yeah. of that, we don't gain the wisdom. Because with Jesus himself, when Jesus went to, into Nazareth when he was a grown man, and people wanted him to do miracles, so they were coming and coming. But they themselves, they didn't believe it. So Jesus decided not to do any miracles. Hmm. That's very thought-provoking. God bless you for sharing with us. Amen. Precious ones, sometimes we pray and we ask, but we self-doubt ourselves, right? But one thing I always tell my kids that the job of a child, their job is to school, right? A mom and dad has to work to provide, right? Therefore, if God, the man that you love so much that you get up and pray to every morning has, he's the source. He is the source that, that you can get wisdom from to help you do good in school. Why wouldn't you ask and why wouldn't you believe in that, that he can give it to you? Do you think kids that are super smart, they just, some are even not Christians, right? So let alone we that are Christians, that Jesus loves us. The Bible says that Jesus said, let all children come to me, right? For this is the kingdom of heaven. So what makes you think that when you ask God for wisdom, he won't give it to you? And why do you have to self-doubt yourself? Precious ones, if you are one of them, let us stop and believe and ask. Because all you need is wisdom to study, to go to the one of the Ivy League schools, the Ivy schools you want, wherever you want to do your career, everything, you need what? Wisdom from God. And when God gives it, he gives it freely. He doesn't rebuke. So let's think about that. But I know our God is a generous God. He will give it to us. So let us desire all for it, okay? God richly bless you. There are many people who showed incredible faith in the Bible. And uh, some of the people in the Bible that show this incredible faith I don't want to quiz you guys this afternoon, but some of them were Abraham, right? Moses, David, Paul, Jesus. Some of these incredible people exhibited faith in the Bible, right? And today we are going to focus on Noah. This afternoon, we are going to focus on one of the people in the Bible that exhibited faith, and that is Noah, and the evidence and the effect of his faith. So we are going to look at three things. We are looking at the character who is Noah. We'll look at the evidence of it, and then the effect of his faith, evidence of the faith, and then the effect of the faith. And I know that we've already read Hebrews eleven seven, right? So, and then we also read um, Genesis 9, verse 9 to 11. So if we don't mind, I think this scripture was, um, um, Daron that read it for us. Daron, can you read Hebrews 11, 7 again, and then Genesis 9, 9 to 11, please? Okay. So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Now read. It was by faith that, from the NLT, it says, it was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him, who warned him about things that had never happened before. Mm. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Then, Amen. Then Genesis chapter 9, the verse 9 to 11, and I read. I hereby confirm my covenant with you. I hereby confirm my covenant with you and your descendants, and with you and with all the animals that were on the boat with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, every living creature on earth. Yes, I am confirming my covenant with you. Never mm -hmm. again will flood waters kill all living creatures. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. Amen. 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 God bless you for your fantastic reading. Now, Amen. precious one, what was it that Noah couldn't see from what Daron read for us? What was it that Noah couldn't see with his eyes? What was it? Yes, um, Declan, if you want to try. 
Uh, the flood. He couldn't the see flood. the flood. The flood. Fantastic. God bless you. The flood. Noah couldn't see the flood. Right? He couldn't see it. The eventual flood was there, but he couldn't see it. Right? Now, what made him, who, oh, pretty much, what made him to act in obedience? Remember, these all these questions are all coming from what Darren read, right? The first one was that what was it that no one couldn't see? And Declan said that what well, the flood. Now, what made him act in obedience? I don't think that upon all the men around those times, Noah saw God or heard from God. And he just, you know, sometimes you even hear a small voice talking to you. Sometimes you kind of self-doubt yourself. So what made, what makes you think made Noah to yield or to obey that voice? Yes, Declan, Adaron. When we read the when we read the Hebrews chapter eleven to verse seven, it said that it said that it was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. Mm -hmm. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. I have to stop there because that's why I'm taking my point. And when you ask what made him, and I believe that apart from faith, also God, it says that who warned him about things that had never happened before meaning that god has also had also proven himself so this wasn't also faith this was also trust and obedience so noah had complete trust obedience and everything that god when god said that there would be a flood there would be a flood so he was completely faithful to god fantastic god richly bless you so what made him act in obedience is holy fear it's a holy fear and the result of the fear was that what? He saved his family because of the heirs of the righteousness. And God promised that what? He would never, he would never, he would never destroy the earth again. God bless you, Declan. Uh, Darren, God richly bless you. There was one question that I was going to ask, but I answered it myself. But, um, We'll go on and then I'll ask another one. Now, precious ones, I want us to think a little bit deeper, right? So we're saying that we asked the question that what made him act in obedience? And then Declan pretty much uh, went back to the Bible and it all resulted in what? Fear, the fear of the Lord, the holy fear of the Lord. And then what was the result? The result was that he saved his family, right? So acting in obedience, he was able to save his family because of the hair of righteousness. And God promised that what? He would never flood the earth again. Now, precious ones, I want us to start imagining this act. We don't want to bore everyone with the newest act and, and how it started building up and all that. If we start, we will not leave here. But just think about how huge, if you read the Bible, they kind of describe it. The Bible says that what it was like 450 feet long, which is like 90 foot long than a football field. This is how big the length of that act was, right? Seven feet wide, almost like as wide as an eight-story building, tall. Are we trying to imagine things in our head now? And then 45 feet high, like as tall as what? Two flagpoles put on top. I'm sure precious was some of us standing there will be like, what's going on here? It's just like going to New York and standing at the, at, the bay, uh, at the bottom of Rockefeller Center. Who have gone to the top of the Rockefeller Center? No one. Try it this summer. Let mommy and daddy take you to Rockefeller Center and then try and climb to the top, the top place. It is like 50 
I think it's 50. I don't know. I may be wrong. It is really tall. And it's in New York. And when you go to the, like the last floor, you see every corner of New York. It is so, you won't fall off. And there is, there's an elevator that when you get in, it takes you straight there in like two, like 10 seconds, the fastest elevator I've ever taken. It was, it was, it was just a phenomenon. It's, 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 it's something that you have to go see. Tell mommy about it. Share it with mommy and daddy for mommy and daddy to take you there. And what am I saying? If we look at, I'm just talking about height and width. And that's why I, I was trying to um, make reference to these tower, this tower in, in New York. And look, they are saying that it's the, 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 the feet, the, the 45 feet high is as tall as adding two flag poles on top of each other. Beloved, it would have been easy for Noah to be overwhelmed with what God is asking him to do. Don't you think so? That there may be some, uh, sometimes in our lives, may, there may be things that we will hear from the Lord because God can speak to us, right? That sometimes you will self-doubt yourself. You may think that, oh, I don't think this is coming from God, right? Then you even go share with mommy and daddy and I'm sure they will bust into, in, into, into, into uh, they will laugh and, and laugh in tears. Why? Because it, it's like, it's too, it's too hard to believe, right? Don't you think that with this description that I gave with the Noah's act, do you think Noah was overwhelmed about all this? And let's even look at how many years it took him to build it. Yes, um, Darren, your hand was up. Yeah, I think he was over, like a little bit overwhelmed, not completely overwhelmed where he just fell down and said, God, I can't do this. But I believe that he was overwhelmed, like, okay, God has given me a very big task. So I think what he did was, okay, God has done all this for me. I'm 500 and I'm still alive. And it also took him 120 years. But, and when you read the Bible, you realize that that was the time limit that God had given every man to live there. But because, of, because Noah was righteous in God's sight, God made sure that he kept on living so much that he could build the ark and still live to see his grandsons. God bless you. God bless you, Darren. God richly bless you. So this is a fantastic example of what we talk about. And as Darren, you were saying that he, he might have been overwhelmed, but not completely, right? And I love what you just said, but Precious one, does somebody, is somebody's hand up before I continue? Okay, nobody's hand is up. So it is good you said that nobody, um, he was overwhelmed, but not completely. Precious ones, not completely because, right? His holy fear and trust was in God. God equipped Noah to act on his faith. And the entire earth has been what? Has benefited because of obedience, right? So, um, Darren, I loved when you said that word, when I asked the question that, do you think that it, this would have been easy for Noah to be overwhelmed with what pretty much God asked him to do? And he said that what? He was a little bit, but not completely. And yes, he wasn't completely why? Because what? The holy fear and the trust that Noah had in God, God equipped him, right? For him to act on his faith. And now the entire earth has benefited from that because of what? Obedience. Because of obedience. Yes, James. Uh, and Tini, now, I was, one thing I forgot to say was that, number one, Noah shouldn't have been overwhelmed because he should have had faith in God and God should have, like, you know, he should have been, since he was the servant of God, he should have been able to be with God and trust God. So Noah really shouldn't have been afraid of pretty much anything, in my opinion. James is God. James, God bless you for your great contribution. James is also saying that he doesn't think that he should have been overwhelmed, right? It is God that revealed to him. It is God that spoke to him. 
So if God spoke to you, you shouldn't be overwhelmed because God will see you through it, right? He's going to be with you at every step of the way. But remember, he's also human, right? Sometimes we get a little bit overwhelmed. So it is good that we know that he wasn't overwhelmed. He wasn't truly 100% overwhelmed. And what? God also equipped him, right? Our theme for the year comes in here, right? God equipped him. God will equip us as precious ones. There's no circumstances that we are going through or your family is going through that God will not see you through. We need to have faith. Even if we have faith as small as the master see, the Lord will see us through our circumstances. The Lord will equip us. God will walk us through, see us through the problems that will come our way. Therefore, we just have to have what? A cordial relationship with our maker, right? And he, the Lord, will be with what? Remember we said what? If you have, a faith, you have faith as small as the master see, it will grow when you have what? A relationship with the Lord right? It's just that the child that doesn't only knows mommy. If you live with a baby for a very long time, you realize that at first they only know mommy. Why? Because mommy gives them milk, right? And food. And then as they begin to grow, they build relationship with mommy. They begin to realize, oh, there's, oh, there's daddy. Oh yeah. And there is a brother. Oh yeah. And there is a sister. So at first it was just mommy. They will go. Now they will go to daddy. Now they will go to brother. Now they will go to sister, right? Why? Because they are beginning to build what? Faith and relationship. And the more they build what? The relationship and get to know who is around them and what makes them feel safe, they begin to what? Their faith and their trust in you begins to grow and grow bigger. To the extent that when mommy leaves them with you, they know, oh, James got me. James will not make anything harm me. Oh, uh, Jaden will make sure nothing bad happens to me. Oh, Darren will make sure, Declan will say that, oh, Darren will protect me when that bad guys are coming. Darren will be there to save me, right? Oh, Gina will say that, oh, Sean has my back, right? Precious ones. When we have good relationship with the Lord, our faith also grows. And here we've realized that Noah was, was not discouraged after he heard from God because he knows that God will equip him. God will strengthen him. God will grant him what it takes to build the Noah's ark. So precious was at home. Believe in the Lord. Believe and have a unique relationship with the Lord. And your faith will be built in Christ. And when you build your faith in Christ, there's nothing that when you exercise, when they say that when you have faith like a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Hmm. It means that if I go stand and I tell mountain move in Jesus' name, it doesn't move. That means that my, my faith has not got into the master seed yet, right? Just kidding. We need to exercise our faith. We, need, we don't have to self-doubt ourselves. Let's exercise faith and let's ask God. Let us ask him. We are privileged. Jesus loved little children. Let us ask God, right? Sometimes you need precious ones. You need to go on your knees and pray for your mom. Pray for your dad. Pray for the church. Pray for your pastor in the family. Pray for your teacher. Remember, precious ones, if you don't get a good teacher in class, oh, they will give you trouble, right? They will give you trouble. So even before school is out and you're going back to school, you pray, God, help me get the right teacher for the school year. You need to pray for that. Grant me wisdom. Prepare me as I start my school year. Even as I'm about to write my state exam, God help me to make what? Good grades. And don't just say that and be playing video game. You also have to learn, right? And God will help you make the grades. God richly bless you. Fantastic contribution. Precious ones, I want us to read um, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. I think Darren read, uh, Declan read that. Can you help us with that, please? 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We live by believing, not by seeing. Amen. We live by what? Believing. Believing. Believing and not by seeing. Okay, precious ones. This question goes to all of us, right? So I'm going to ask this question and we're going to go around and everybody has to share with me. 
I want you to find example, right? Of a time in your life, in your own life, when you lived by faith and not by sight. And I will share mine too. I don't know whether I've shared with everyone here before, but I will share mine. Everybody should be able to tell me something. A time you lived by faith and not by sight. Everybody have something to tell. Yes, Darren. For me, and well, for me and my brother Deacon, because this was like a two month thing. Me and my brother Deacon, we've been wanting a set of toys for a very, very long time. And but and then we prepared everything. Then then now it was left for asking our dad to buy it. That that part was very tough. Me and Deacon, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed, <laughs> and everything. When we are doing our devotions, we prayed. We made sure that it will when we had to also choose the perfect time. So we are praying, we are like, God, if you give us this toy, just at least just this one. We'll, then we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. You don't know how many promises of me that still I'm not done keeping. And what happened was that when we went there, our mom wasn't there because our mom, when if we had to ask in front of her, she'd say that, no, all you do is just make sure it becomes a noise and trouble for us. So no, our mom wasn't there at that time. We went into the office. Then now I was left with Hood's axe. None of us wanted to ask <laughs> Even though we don't lose anything, it's just... But you've already prayed. Yeah. Well, our faith was a bit wavering by then. You know, before you, <laughs> before the test comes, you're always so confident. When I'm teachers, loving this. You realize it's it's wavering a little. Mm -hmm. So then me and Deccan, we decided to go. Then when we went, we showed our dad. We asked, this is what we want and want and want. Good. Then our dad said, why this one specifically? Then our faith, it started going down rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> then we said, because, well, um, the ones we have isn't really the best and everything we told. We tried to make it as, as convincing, but with our faith going down, wasn't, we weren't really doing much. Good thing we had prayed, because I believe if we hadn't, it wouldn't have gone well. It, in the end, we ended up getting about three times more than what we actually Ooh. wanted. I was Ooh. like, ah. When, when we there, me, and, me and my brother, we started jumping and everything. It set us in a good mood for the rest of the week. And it was near, right near my birthday also. Wow. Wow. God bless you for sharing with us. I love the piece that you said you prayed before you went. But when you went, you were still what? Self-doubting yourself whether daddy would do it or not. But when you asked and he was started asking you questions, your faith what kept melting, melting, melting. But finally, out of the blue, God touched daddy's heart and you got even three times what you asked for. That is the doing of the Lord. God richly bless you. Who else want to share with us? I'm enjoying the story. Luckily, that does not mean you don't have to share it. You have to move for some shit. Who is going to go next? Okay, let's go to Jaden and then we'll come to Declan. Yes, Jaden. So, first, I wanted a boy game. Mm -hmm. Then, that's when I, I asked and I didn't get it. And mm -hmm. then, that's when. I kept thinking about it and kind of like playing in my head and like saying, God, please help me get this. And then that's when one day I actually got it, but then it actually got destroyed by my sister. Oh no! But you see, the good side of it is that you ask for a toy and you got it, right? But your sister also loved the same toy. And you being a good sharer, you shared with her and then she broke it. That makes you a good big brother, right? Makes mm -hmm. you a big, good brother. I know you were a little bit upset, but because Jesus loves you, you have to let it go, right? I think she broke it because I kept winning. Oh, okay, okay. 
God bless you for sharing with us. God bless you. Yes, James' hand was up or go to Declan. Okay, let James go, then Declan, you come. Okay. Yes, James. So I wanted to share like the story of like when my sister was born, how um, it really took faith because uh, what happened was uh, there was this thing. I don't, I forgot exactly how it happened, but there was this leak of like carbon monoxide when we, me and what were around and it was very, it got to a very bad point. And my mom was kind of like panicking because she was pregnant at that time. And we had to go to the hospital and get like lab tests and everything. But then thankfully when we got there, um, the, everything mom was able to deliver and everything went fine. So I just wanted to share my story. Amen. 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 You prayed, you prayed because not everybody get the chance to be alive after a leak of carbon monoxide, right? It's a very poisonous gas. Nobody needs to inhale that. So when you do that, sometimes you can pretty much, you inhale more of it. So you begin to get more CO2 in you and then you have less of O2. And then when it does that, you begin to have like shortness of breath. You can't really breathe properly. And mommy carrying a baby and James being a little one is like, you have to go to the ER for them to check you to make sure everybody is okay. And we thank God by faith and by prayer. Nothing happened and miracle was born. God bless you for sharing with us. Yes, Declan, and I will share mine. Yes, Declan. So there once was a time where I was, I was doing a science test and I wasn't really too sure of the answers that I chose. So when I got to, I prayed and prayed and I prayed. And luckily the next day I got an A plus on that test. God bless you. God bless you. Living by faith and not by sight. Living by faith and not by sight. God bless you for sharing with us. Living by faith and not by sight. I know I have shared this. I think my testimony, I shared in what I shared in here. Oh, I shared it in today's woman. Today's woman. So when I had my son, you know, I told you I have a 16-year-old son, right? And after my senior 16 years old son was born, and then went to school. I wanted to have more kids. And then it wasn't happening. It wasn't babies were not coming. But I really, really love girls. It's not that I, I don't like boys. I love girls. And I think the reason why I was loving girls because I already had a boy, right? So I wanted a girl too, so that if I have one boy and one girl, I would be good. So I started praying. I got a little bit worried. I got distracted and all that. And just to cut the whole story short, it got to a time I was living by faith and not by sight. I've been to the hospital, I've done everything, but nothing was happening. I've seek medical help. They told me that there's nothing they can do for me. Just go home and just take it easy or go adopt, right? Go adopt a child and just take care of it as your own. But guess what? One funny thing I did. One time I was praying and something just dawned on me. Anytime you go to the store, start buying girls clothes, right? So I went to the store and any old, by then they had a store called Jamboree, Jenny and Jack's Children's Place. I go there and I'll be looking at, on my days off, I just walk into the girls stores, clothes children's stores, and I'll go to the girls section and I will look and admire, started buying shoes for a baby girl, and, and hair bands and all that. Guess what? I bought those things for about six years. Six years I was buying them, hoping that, oh, I would get a girl for them. It go to a point that I lost faith, right? Even though I was, what, living by faith, by getting them, right? Oh, I'm going to buy them because the more I buy them, I'll get it. It go to a point as, as human as we had begin to, to my faith decided to go down. I felt like I'm tired. How long will I keep doing it? You know, when I said more than six years, some of you open your eyes, just looking. And guess what? One day, it took a day. It took a day. And then goes a baby girl. Then another baby girl. So sometimes we need to live by faith, right? I start acting 
right? And it will get to a point that you really self-doubt yourselves. Hey, this faith I'm living, is it real? The real faith I'm living? It is uh, it's human that we will self-doubt ourselves. But that is my story too of living by faith and not by sight. Meaning that by faith, I was buying the girl's clothes. By sight, I didn't have any baby girl to put the clothes on that baby, but I was still buying them. But one day, because I lived by faith, my faith word grew, even though it got to a point where it was declining, God surprised me, right? So my emphasis on is by faith, I was buying girls clothes, right? By sight, not by sight, there was no girl to put the clothes on. But at the end of it all, God glorified himself. And that is my story too. So what we want to say is that as the Bible tells us, if you have a faith, a faith as small as a master seed, right? You should still what? Have a relationship with the Lord and the faith will grow. Oh, hallelujah. Precious ones, I love your stories. Fantastic stories. Um, Janelle, do you want to share with us? I think they are not on video. Or we can go on. Do you have anything to share with us, Janelle? No? They are driving, so I'm sure they can hear us. So, precious ones, another thing that I want us to also look at is, oh, let me ask this girl. Okay, I won't ask any more questions. So, we always have to what? Have the assurance. Uh, the assurance to receive from the Lord, right? We need to have an assurance to always receive from the Lord because if the Lord says, his word says that I will make you the head and not the tail, then we need to believe in that and the Lord will do it for us. What other actions that will increase our faith? What other actions will increase our faith? Do we know other actions that can increase our faith? Yes, Daryl. Well, whenever we pray, we are increasing our faith. We meet with others. You see, just like how you were just telling us your stories, it all increases our faith because it says, if you did this for Auntie Nina, then you can do it for me. I believe exactly. that this one called, it's a cheese song. Adiawaya, Mama Mary. Adiawaya, Mama Sarah. Adiawaya, Mama Jacob. Adiawaya, Mama Jesus. I feel they do me so. Eratini dawasi. Eratini yiwa. So what you did for Darren, and you did for Sarah, and you did for Jaden, and you did for Auntie Nina, and you did for James, it has what? It is now my turn, and you have done it for me. So God, I glorify your name. Yeah. So yeah. when you meet with others. You are reading the word of God. You are doing devotion. All of these can increase your faith. So mm -hmm. there are other multiple other ways you can go. Whenever you hear preaching, there are certain preachings that you know they are just meant for you alone. Mm. You can go. God oh, bless you. Too. Testimonies, the word of God, a pastor or somebody sharing the word of God with you. God speaks to us anytime His word comes. That's how I, 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 I take it. Anytime I sit under the um, um, the unction or I mean church and somebody is preaching, I just take it, it is the Lord that is speaking to me. I have to receive it, right? So we can what? Exhibit our faith through what? The word. When the word comes to us, our faith grows. When we hear people's testimony, our faith grows. Which other ways again? Everybody should be able to tell me some. Yes, James, your hand was up. Or oh, we said it. We said that. Oh, okay, you can read. You can go, James. I was saying, like, when we read the Bible, like, like they said, when we hear the things that God has done, like he was with Moses when he parted the Red Sea, and then he did this, and then he did that. And then just hearing all the things that God has done can help you, like, to build your faith. You know? Amen. Amen. And actually, this, this reminds me. So I think last week or two weeks ago, right? And I'm in my messenger right now. And I'm reading what a Sunday school kid. I don't even know where he is. 
in the nation tested me that, oh, I saw one of your kids time with Jesus. There's this boy that they posted that, and they were talking about James. The boy was talking about James because the mom showed him James did well in school, something, and then they posted it on Facebook. And the mom showed him. So to him, if James is doing well in school, then he knows that he will also do well in school. He tested me on, 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 on um, Messenger. And to me, I was I, it was mind blowing. So he said, I saw a kiss time with Jesus. So the boy watches kiss time with Jesus. And then James' mom posted something about James on, James, what was it about? It was an achievement, academic achievement, right? Uh, uh, my school made me the student of the week. Yeah, the student of the week. And then the child side pinged me on Messenger that the mom had showed him that James did that. So that has encouraged him to also do well like that, like what James did. I said, wow, it was a mind blowing, right? So as we do, we become what people also look at us. They imitate us just as we imitate God or Christ, right? So precious ones, as we all were talking about earlier, we asked the question about how does people see from us that we are believers, right? This is also a perfect example of that. Precious ones, we thank God for his work on, in our lives, right? So what was the question on the floor again that Auntie Nina has forgotten? So we were talking about what, Darren? You can remind me. What were we talking about? Actions that increase our faith. What, what Actions can we do that to... increase our faith and what can we do to increase it? God bless you. And uh, Declan, we are bringing our lesson to an end. Yes, Declan, what do you want to share with us before we bring the class to an end? Uh, one action, uh, you can read up, you can do your devotion and, and that increases our faith because when you are doing your devotion, you read the Bible, you discuss it with your friends and families and people and the Christians, and then you pray about what you discussed. So I think that that's the overall uh, message or how you increase your faith. How you increase spending time to read your Bible, spending time to read your Bible. That is very, very important too. May the Lord bless us. We have learned about what? About faith. We have learned about truth. We have learned about walk, walking in truth, walking in love, walking in wisdom, and walking in what? By faith. Four walks. Precious ones, this is deep. This topics were deep, right? And I've, I hope you have enjoyed it. Do not forget, there will be a Bible trivia coming up. There's a Bible trivia coming up from all the scriptures that we have learned. And I want you to know that in two weeks, Bible trivia is coming. We will send you the information for you to study, not the questions, just the whole information, put it together and send it to you. And Auntie Linda will put the stuff together, all the material together, and we should be ready in two weeks for Bible trivia. So this time we'll tighten the questions a little bit harder for you, not super hard, but it will be something that, it wouldn't be something you've not heard before. It is something that I'm sure you have heard before. May the Lord bless you for your time. We have learned what walk in faith, walk in truth, walk in wisdom, and walk in love. Four things, the four walks. As you go through the year, remember to walk in wisdom. Remember to walk in love. Remember to walk in faith. And remember to walk in truth. Remember the only truth is the word of God. And the word of God, with the only source of our wisdom is Christ Jesus, our Lord and personal savior. Remember, there's no more, any other truth anywhere. And there is no place to go seek from, for wisdom. It is all in um, from the Lord. And even if you forget yourself, read James chapter one, chapter one, verse five, where it says that we need to ask for wisdom, right? And he, the general God, will grant it to us without rebuking. Let us ask freely. Let us ask freely. May the Lord bless us all. In the month of April, after our Bible trivia, we start the story about the death of Christ, the death of Christ. So stay put. We see you next week. Until then, is God bless you. 
We love you and bye. Let us hear your feedback, what we can do to improve. And Elder Sam and then Soph Morgan, we love you for all you do behind the scenes. Kiss down with Jesus Committee, Auntie Golda, Auntie Linda, we love you all. Elder James, we love you all. God bless all of you. Until then, it's bye. We love you. And our mommies and daddies that allows our children to Zoom in every Sunday. God richly bless you for availing your children to be used for the kingdom business. We love all of you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. We love you all. Bye. bye. <laughs>